Right from the beginning, as recorded in the Word of God, most of mankind has rebelled against God. Man has wanted to worship the creature more than the Creator. We have seen this with the fall of Adam and Eve, with the murder of Abel by Cain, with Nimrod and the Tower of Babel, and Sodom and Gomorrah. These are just a few examples recorded in history. Because God loves us, he created a solution to bring mankind to him. What was God's solution to reconcile man back to him? It took God's only begotten Son, our Lord's sacrifice as a plan for salvation to justify those that believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior, or Yeshua. Jesus took the wrath of God in our place. He paid the price and offers a full pardon to those that believe and trust in Him. In His finished work, believe the Gospel. Now let's go to just before the start of Jesus Christ's ministry with John the Baptist. Let me read these verses. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as said by the prophet Isaiah. And the, and they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him, and said unto him, Why baptize thou then, if thou be not the Christ, or Elias, neither that prophet? That's John 1, to 25 Remember the word straight. Bring that to your attention. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. But there standeth one among you, whom ye know not. He it is, who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. That's John 1, 26-29. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. John 1, 3, 3. Now let's go to after Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. To the journey to the road of Damascus with Saul of Tarsus, and later called Paul. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul! Saul, why persecutest thou me? That's Acts 9, 3 through 4. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. That's Acts 9, 5 through 6. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, 
But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. That's Acts 9, 7 through 9. Make straight your paths. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in, and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Acts 9, 10 through 12. The name Ananias means answered by the Lord. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he receiveth sight forwith, and arose, and was baptized. That's Acts 9, 17, 18. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. Acts 9, 19 through 20. Saul's name is changed to Paul. Jesus revealed the gospel to Paul. Jesus wanted Paul to preach the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, to the Gentiles, to the ends of the earth. Here is the gospel. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I have preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherem ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Mark 1.15 The meaning of repent here is to change your thinking, to stop believing your false beliefs, and now believe the gospel, found at 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Other important revelations given to Paul by Jesus. Salvation is not earned. It is a free gift. This verse reveals this truth, and there's many other verses that support this. But let's read Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Very important to know this. The plan of salvation. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans 3.22-24 The plan of salvation continued. 
whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare I say at this time his righteousness that as he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus where is boasting then it is excluded by what law of works nay but by f the law of faith Romans 3 25 to 27 your righteousness is according to the Bible you have none unless you believe in Jesus Christ Jesus Christ's righteousness is imputed to you by faith it is a free gift believe in what Jesus Christ did for you Jesus Christ blood that he shed on the cross washes away your sins if you are a believer he died for all people he loves you believe on what the Word of God says some very important verses Peter said who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed 1 Peter 2 24 this following verse Peter edifies Paul's ministry an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you 2 Peter 3.15 The Old Testament points to Christ. The New Testament reveals to us the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the gift of salvation our Lord and God has made available to us if we believe and trust in His finished work on the cross. Believe the scriptures about what Jesus Christ did. Believe the word of God. Make straight your paths. You have two choices. Trust what the world says and perish. Or trust what the word of God said about Jesus Christ and live forever. I want to draw your attention for a moment. Look at these two following verses. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, for the one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. That's Acts 9.11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Revelation 9:11. See these two verses; they are a 9:11 warning for you. Do you want to be the person that has a change of heart, like Saul, or later renamed Paul, and be saved and have eternal joy, eternal life? See, Paul changed from a legalistic, unbelieving Pharisee. To a faithful apostle of Christ or by your unbelief and that's the only way you are sent to hell is by not believing by your unbelief will you go to the bottomless pit the lake of fire and have the king over you called Apollyon and have eternal punishment to be a slave of his forever what do you choose? Take this 911 warning message to heart because time is running out, either the end of your life or the end of time, and make your path straight. Believe and trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior alone. I hope this video was a blessing for you. Please like 
and share to your friends and family and everyone you know. God bless you.